Yeah, now I'm going to show you something else. It's also part of the Novi controllers. Um, not necessarily something which has to do with the Corona time, but uh, let's take a look and see exactly what it does. Because this is how to fire events from one device to another device. Let's see how it works. I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, that's me again. So now I'm going to show you another thing. I'm going to show you how to fire events from one display to another display or several displays. So we have this one here. This is a touch kiosk. That means it's just a, a display with Android inside and a touch screen. That means if I touch here, it's like clicking with a mouse. Now I also have this display. This is uh, uh, our Philips P line. And just imagine that I'm now in a restaurant. Okay, this is a display on a restaurant. And let's say that I have another one. This is going to be le the left display and there's going to be a right display. Sorry, not enough room for all of the display, so we're just going to use the left one. Now, this is the kiosk, okay? I can also do it on my smartphone, like I do with other things, but if I press this one, the happy birthday left, then look at this TV. All right, I've just sent a message. Actually, I triggered an event of a happy birthday, and I can do the same if I press this one anniversary left okay I would like to say happy anniversary to a couple in my restaurant I do the same let's imagine that now there's an earthquake so I'm pressing this and all over the screens we're going to get this scary message that there's an earthquake and do you feel wet here yeah now let's say that there's a flood all right that's a flood alert also fire alert you name it and you can do that not only to one screen, from one to another, also with multiple screens. The only thing I need to configure on this screen is just a static IP because this screen needs to know who is it going to talk with. That means it needs a target IP. When actually everything is being said on the creative itself, that's why in advance I need to know what's going to be the IP address of this screen or any other screen which I would like to trigger content on it. So I need to set a static IP because if I don't set a static IP after reboot, the IP address might change. And that's the only thing I need to do on this app. Everything else, you just install it like you're used to. And for this, I will show you on the studio how it's being configured. All right, thanks for watching. And this is from the studio side. So from the studio side, I have here, let's see, this is the screens. I have the restaurant controller. And I also have the restaurant right and the restaurant left, which was the big screen which you saw out there. But let's take a look at the restaurant controller. Let's enter that. We have actually one playlist. Let's open the playlist. And that playlist has only one single creative. Whatever you saw on the screen is that single creative. Let's open that creative and see what exactly is under the hood. So under the hood of this creative, we see those kind of buttons, and those buttons are actually the label widget with some uh, colored background. So for example, the left one, the one which triggers the happy birthday in on the left screen, if we scroll down a little bit, there's the touch section over here. I open the touch section, and you can see touch property, send event to player. All right, if I click this, you can see that we have around seven touch uh, actions. So this action is called send event to player. What does it mean? That's I'm going to send an event to some other player, not, not to this one, but to some other player. And which one is the other player? The one which its IP address is actually set over here. Okay, I see this IP address, and that's the IP address of the left display the big one, that Philips P line, and also there's a port, so I need to specify IP address and a port. That's one thing, and the other part of the story is the event. I'm sending an event to that screen. This event is called just number one. So on the other screen, I need to set what's happening when just number one happens. So uh, if I go to the other screen, let's go to the screens, let's go to the left one. Okay, I'm opening the playlist. 
And this is the playlist of the, of the big TV, the one which you saw in the video. And let's see what's happened when uh, that event takes part, that just number one. Um, let's click schedule. You see there each one of those creatives has an event which was set. This one, for example, means just number two, sorry, just number three. And that one was, I think it was this one. You can see that just number one is the event which is assigned to this creative. And this creative has this checkbox play only in the own events. That means this creative will appear only when there's event. And which event? This event, the just number one. Now, this playlist doesn't know, it doesn't trigger that event of number one. The event of number one is being sent from a different device. It was sent from the other kiosk, which has, which is another screen with another playlist. And that's the whole beauty here, that we can trigger events from one device to the other device. And I will tell you more than that. Actually, if we set a static IP on both devices and both of them have touch abilities, we can trigger events on device on, on one device from the other and on the other device from the first device that means full duplex in both ways so uh, and of course we can trigger events on multiple uh, uh, target displays as each one has its own IP address and like you saw in that video that's the only thing which you need to do in any target uh, display just set the IP address a static one and the rest is just the same